everyone, Karen Cecilia here. I hope everybody is good. I want to talk a little bit about the IC um, sojourn into King Charles III Parliament um, on Tuesday afternoon. And um, I just want to uh, share with you some things I observe. And, um, and just, <laughs> just share with you some things I observe. I hope that most Jamaicans watch it. It didn't look like it was well watched. Last time I checked was when I was going back to find something. It was 3,000 people. So um, please, um, let's share that IC um, thing to the to the parliament. Let's share it. Let it get to Jamaicans. Let them see the questions that were being asked by the parliamentarians and let them see the answers that the IC commissioners um, produced. And let them see the action and behavior of Chief Justice and Head of the IC, the, um, the Honorable Justice Panton. The Jamaicans need to should go and watch it and and and, and listen to the questions and the and, and and the and the answers. It was a very good hearing in my estimation. It was it was very good, well, very well done. So I just want to share some things with you. Um, I'm sure Michelle is going to Jamaica 411 is going to go into details about the questions and answers, and you all should tune into that whenever she actually put it together. Cause sometime when when we decide on something, she take forever. So um, she will. Come with it, I'm sure. So just um, lose all feed. So Justice Panton went to King Charles III Parliament and show up in PMP self. I mean, he never fail and showing up in PMP self, shaking him body and come on with all kind of attitude and doing all kind of little body movement and shifty eye movements because him come to um, you know, him come to come reclaim him my ass. The, the, the IRs that he was on before we start calling him out for his actions and suggest that his allegiance is to Bakram Asa Mark and not to Jamaica. And we start to question their behavior. So he came to reclaim that high horse because it has never been done. He, 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 in all his life as public service, nobody has ever questioned him and called him out for anything. So I'm always getting away with these things. And now um, all kind of things. Life has a funny way, calm, have a funny way of... Of, of making things catch up with people like him after a while, you know. So him came, he, he went to the parliament and him going out with all kind of things, talking about all kind of things. And I want to share with you some of the things that he was saying and um, some of the questions that were that were asked and 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 how it was received and and how he himself dealt with it as the head uh, of the IC and what I read from it all i never i never sat down and watched the whole thing i was listening most of the time because I, i'm working while I'm, I'm listening and then sometimes there's a moment when you pause and, and just take it in you know there were one and two of those moments but justice panton's demeanor was one of slight defiance uh and, and but his body language gave him away in many instances particularly when he attempted to answer a question that um, proved to be difficult because of his own biases or because of his own assumptions about something. So when he gets a question that uh, that kind of threw him off his body language, move about. He was very curt to the parliamentarians. In some instances, um, he was shady. In some instances, his, his eyes were also very, um, very, uh, you know, moving around like. <laughs> Kim Kaim just look at the question did, that's all. His arrogance and, and his cocky cocky way of trying to to to, to display a sense of humor. Um that failed. You know, he, he told us all that he was a preacher, he was a um lay pastor or something in, in, in the Methodist church, and invite us all to come to church. Well he was not all, he was inviting the parliamentarians because he went there to to show some kind of super, superiority to the parliamentarians, some superiority in in intellect and superiority in in in, in standards and you know and stature. So it, it, it went there for a particular reason, you know. You know, basically to say to the whole of them that you know, when you can chat up with the mouth and go and do anything you don't want, but this is what me I say and I this me I say, you know, that is attitude. And it all was meant to downplay the battering that the IC has been getting and pretend that it has not affected the morale at the IC office and threatened the commissioner's image, you know, including his. 
So his, his whole attitude was designed for that, to pretend to downplay the battering, to downplay the beating that social media and um, some members of parliament and politicians and activists have been reeling at him and him crew. And him come there with that, um, you know, with, with, that, with, that, with, that, with that whole attitude, that air of superiority. You know, and uh, I don't want to talk, I don't want to talk, but this doesn't change anything, you know, basically that kind of kind of attitude. His entire opening statement was meant to reclaim the narrative, in my personal view, and to reclaim his IOS. And as I said, he failed. And the next time, if there should be another airing, he's going to go there with a double dose of that old demeanor and a sharper edge to that statement. And I'm going to tell you why I believe that he's going to do that the next time, if there's a next time um, that happens. I believe that because there were instances in his demeanor and his body language where he was showing very clearly that um, it really shouldn't be there and how dare them um, request him to be there and, 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 and boss him up to go be there and him never want to be there and him don't believe that they should have. So he was showing some little, a little bit of disrespect and, and lack, of, um, lack of respect in general. Not to the parliament itself, but to the parliamentarians. And I suspect based on his body language and his facial expressions and the things that he says and the way him down him eyes when he's saying them, basically to say the whole oh, no, F off or something to that effect. I mean, you can't see it unless you learn to read people's body language. You don't really need to learn to read people's body language. His eyes were shifty because sometimes he can't answer a question and, uh, and he have a little bit of contempt. Just a little bit. He had a whole, bit of, whole, whole, whole heap of contempt thing going on with the, with, um, for the parliamentarians because how oh, dare they. You know, that's, basic, that's basically what his contempt was, uh, was about. But if nobody else saw through him and pierced him and literally wrecked him, it was Mrs. Malahu Fort. Oh, yes. Mrs. Malahu Fort saw right through him and she steadily and expertly wrecked him like all women wreck men who like to believe that they have some kind of power that nobody else has. But we're going to talk a little bit about, about, about that. But let's start with his, with, with his statement. He started his statement by defending the commissioners, saying that, you know, who, those who were saying that they are partisan and, and that they have malice, he wanted to clear that they have no malice and they are not partisan. And it struck me that if the if the head of the IC have to come to Parliament to tell us that him not um, partisan and him have no malice and him telling us that as a preacher him not have no malice and we all know that most preachers have malice them just pretend that they don't and you want to know when them have malice when them have preach about malice when when them have preach about something that you shouldn't do or something that Jesus would not have us do. You, you just know that they might carry something, some grievances for something that at the church with somebody or something. And that is their way of doing So it is not true that he don't carry ma ma malice. And it is not true that he's not partisan. But that's what he was saying to the parliament, that he's not uh, partisan. In the very early part of his statement, he went, he crossed a line. And it was intended for a particular purpose. He mentioned that 70% of the country don't vote or did not vote the last time. What we had, 29.7% 29 in the local government election. And I failed to see the connection between what he was saying and why he brought up this number. And a matter of fact, when he said it, there was nothing else to it. There was no, it, it wasn't a statement to say something else about voting or about the, the voting public. Or about what the public expect and what the public do. He just stated 70% of the country did not vote. And to me, that was a swipe at the members of parliament to suggest 
that they don't represent a majority of the country. I think that's what he was attempting to do when he when he insert that in his opening statement. Then he talk about the quickness of the leaking of the reports. And I, I think he was mentioned in two in particular. And in that he was trying to be cute. Because of, as usual, he think that he's above everybody else. He was trying to be cute about the leaking. Um, that it is not his commissioners, but someone else. And insinuated that it was someone else from the parliament. So he kept, you know, he accused that, he kept saying that, you know, it's a mystery to him. If nothing is leaked when they have the report, but as soon as the, as quick as the report leaves the IC office, it is leaked. And I don't know why it's a mystery to him. Because it's not a mystery to anybody else. It's only him one pretending that's a mystery to him. Because he assumes that the swiftness of the leak means that it is not his office. And then he pointedly suggested it that it's someone else. And he said it in, in not so many words, but in pointing him fingers at the parliament. So let me let, let me see if we can un unwrap that a little bit for you. So what I'm saying is that because it was at his office and nobody leaked it went to his office, but on its way to parliament it get leaked. So I can't feel him office. Can somebody please talk to Justice Panton and explain how this thing worked for him for me, please? The people at your office, Justice Panton, and it might very well have been you too. I'm not, I'm not, lab, I'm not ruling it out because Mark Golden and his chums them have been good to you. And don't let me start on that. But he's, he's, he's assuming that nobody at his office leaked the report because it never leaked while it was at the, the office. Because Justice Panton believed that everybody an idiot and is more smart. So whoever is leaking the report, um, not smart enough to know that you don't leak it until it leaves the office. So there you go. I think everybody adults and um, suggested that his parliamentarians um, um, leak it because he never said reach a parliament. He said, and as soon as it left the office, it is leaked. So uh, he is a judge. He know he must know that words matter and how you put these words together um, matters. So there's that. Then he bring him own water, him holy water, um, because he made the, the comment that. Before parliamentarians become parliamentarians, and I'm sure him don't know most of them, him know maybe a few of them, but he has, he, make, he made another assumption. He said that before they became parliamentary parliamentarians, they were decent and nice and good people, and as soon as they become parliamentarians, them start saying some other things and doing some other things. So something must must be wrong with the water at the parliament. So I'm bringing more water. Can I want to drink the water at the parliament? Because next thing you know, he must start out the same things um, that the parliamentary people talking. And that's basically what I'm saying. So I'm bringing more water. But would have to call me whatever. I don't want to call me. But I don't think he meant that. I think he meant that him bring him more water. Can I want to buy the pies name? Or something to that effect. The man has absolutely nothing but contempt for the parliamentarians. But I'm going to take him at his word that him bring him water because him fearful of what them drinking down there and them talking foolish to him. No one drink it, I'm going to talk foolish sister. But but I think that's just his way of saying that. Uh, but became one water I'm afraid don't go poison me. He went on to tell us that uh, Mrs. Manuel Ellis couldn't come and, and why I'm, I'm, he saw it fit to go through a number of things, reasons why she couldn't come and that was unnecessary that was unnecessary for him to tell us all the reasons why uh mrs monroe ellis could not come and i make my own assumption from that mrs monroe ellis decides she should not come she are caught she not depend it with them i am i am imagining and and some some things i hear is that mrs monroe ellis had upon most of them depend and she cautioned them about things all the time but of course them a long tone man, man with open balls and them them pop and them and them them bright and them educated and them do things all the time. So this is Manuel Ellis is not somebody that they want to listen to. I don't know what he was talking about with Senator Longmore needs to have a word with Parliament. I don't know what what he was rambling on about with Senator Longmore. Maybe it was a Trump moment. I don't know. But Justice Panton went to Parliament to also scold the parliamentarians and um he went about it in a very in a precise kind of way that to the naked eye would be would be unnoticeable you would see him as your you know your your old crazy uncle where 
just saying the things them that you know right things that needs to be said about it not really, not really mean that there was this you know back and forth about the secrecy act and the jamaican constitution now mrs malahu fort was a star of the show so was um um pernell charles jr and and to and to a more senior extent um minister just um um chuck because minister chuck was basically trying to keep the 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 the, the thing that he wanted to do something else and he was doing that something else which works for him and when when i say mrs malahu ford was classic i mean that in every sense of the word mrs malahu ford is a a refined and well-spoken woman with and she has this composed confidence that it seemed like she she has been practicing maybe she went to boarding school or catholic school i don't know but she has this composed way in which she displays her confidence in what she's saying and her confidence in that what she's saying is right and no matter what you come with you can't beat that she's quiet and uh, and unassuming and um um i have always loved that about her but no i love her for more than just that now and so she was the one who basically wrecked justice panton the first argument that she she and both pernell charles jr brought to him was a secrecy act about you know whether this thing should stay private and nobody should know about it and um and all the rest of it and you know then them go on to explain that those who are being the declarant who's been investigated can say that he, he or she has been investigated i mean that was fuzzy before nobody never knew if that was something so them clear that up that if you know mr mr only if mr Olnitz knew that he was being investigated him could have said or anybody else that's what basically him saying that um them saying um the problem between the secrecy act and the jamaican constitution came up when mrs malahu fought again once again start to talk with him about um how do you or how do you get to the 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 point of i am i am not saying these in exact the same way all right so you have to forgive me i'm just you know trying to put it in layman terms for you so there is the 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 part of the of the of the ic act i don't remember which part it is i'm sure michelle will tell you that that suggests that the, the the ic can go to financial institutions and write to them and say we need the financial we need every financial thing for john public we need every all the financial working for mr so and so and mrs so and so so mrs malo food it for it it on the point where you really need um the declarant to to fill out a form to give to give permission for you to access their information um uh, in the financial institution and the jamaican constitution protect that right so so a whole bunch of things was exposed about the about the 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 the, the, the ic act up against the jamaican constitution and no matter what is up, up against the jamaican constitution the jamaican constitution wins every time it is our supreme um body of laws and 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 acts and and how we behave and what is law and what is right and what is wrong so there was that and um mrs bella who food went at him about that then he went on to say nobody's supposed to discuss um uh, uh, uh the the report before it is tabled and i think both mrs mala who fought and um and per Pernell Charles Jr. missed the opportunity. I think that the members missed the opportunity to um to say to them, if that is the case, then why is this thing out in the public? So, but then I think maybe they decide not to go there because if I go back to the fact that if somebody a leak it and is not coming from his from his office, I would know it coming from his office. Then in his opening statement earlier in in the opening statement, Justice Panton went on to talk about we don't take orders from anyone except the court anyone except the court and i was looking for a raw politician like like um like warmington to say 
Well, maybe you should make the coat pay you then. <laughs> you know, so just to give back the answer then. You know, I mean, Mrs. Mallow who dealt with it superbly. But for what? At, at that point, you needed a loud politician to say, yeah, well, maybe you should go and make the court go pay you. See, you don't answer to nobody else. And Mrs. Malahoufort did, a, did put him in a place about it with a question. You know? Like, and I'm going to layman it for you. Mrs. In layman terms, what Mrs. Malahoufort asked him. Mrs. Malahoufort asked him, are you saying that parliamentarians who sit in this parliament who are the representatives of over 2 million Jamaicans who pay your salary. Are you saying that you are not answerable to us? That bugger never answer. Him couldn't answer. And maybe him, him couldn't answer and maybe if he made open him out, he may go back to him argument about 30% of the Jamaican people that voted and 70% who did not, who did not vote. But he was smart. He was very smart not to answer. He couldn't answer it because he know that it is the legislature that allocate money to pay him money from our money that we elected them to name him and him crew to head to be to, at this commission and that we pay them. I really, really miss somebody like Mr. Warmington to get up to the court, go up to the, the house and say to him, so you make the court pay then, or whoever it is that you think you're answerable to. Because it's we pay you on behalf of the people who elected us. I think the parliamentarians were, Mrs. Malofo did her job superbly, and so did Pernod Chajuna. But there is some, there, there, there are a couple of things that was missing that they should have been more forceful about to tell Justice Pant and listen yeah, we understand. Is we set up this committee? Is Mark Golden right? The 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 the, the IC Act. Him like, like to boast that I him I him write it. Well, Paul well did say him have something to do with some of it too. But I Mark say I him write it. But understand this: we are the legislator. We have been elected by the people. Nobody no elect uno. Nobody elected you, Justice Panton. Nobody elected you or Mr. Christie or any one of your man. Them will hold on to sit down looking like a... We're not going to say that, but you're not going to disrespect you. But Mrs. Mallow, who fought, did ask him. We, the representatives here in Parliament, who the people of Jamaica have elected to represent them, so that we could appoint you and pay you a salary from the Jamaican taxpayers' money. And you are saying that you're not answerable to us or... Nobody can't, no, no, you don't take orders from no one. No, Justice Panton, Panton, you take orders from us, which is basically what Mrs. Malahoufoud was saying to him. He never answer, never answer at all. Then, I love P Philip Powell, I do. I love Philip Powell, I support him 100%. But um, I do not know, or maybe I do, that um, a whole lot of things happen to him, and he had a whole heap of pressure from a whole heap of sides. You know, Angela clone him phone, um, him lose him baby. I mean, a whole lot of things happening to, to Comrade Paulwell, and I do love him and support him. But maybe, based on the things that he said today, uh, today in the parliament, well, I shouldn't say today, on Tuesday in the parliament, that Paulwell said that. The commissioners should not be called to parliament. Never said it in those languages, but I'm, I'm saying it in my terms. It basically was curry favor up to them and telling them that, you know, they should not be called to parliament. And Justice Panton, um, in every reference that he made in terms of bigging up somebody, is always a PMP MP in the parliament. So he was demonstrating clearly the same biases and malices that him same don't have, him can't help himself, him still have to demonstrate it because in every instance that he had to say something good about somebody, it's a PAP MP. So Paul Well made a statement that the commissioners should not be called to parliament. And I mean, I, I mean, I almost flip. I said, what is Philip Paul Well talking about? Because if he feels that a commission that is set up, was set up basically by the parliament 
with laws that were passed by the parliament, by the people who the people of Jamaica elected, and him saying to them that they should not be called to the parliament, then maybe the people ought to then go vote for the IC. Maybe common power need to just chop it in and make his king so people go vote for the IC because that is just ridiculous. That is ridiculous. You are ceding your power and authority to a body that you created and saying that they should not be answerable to you. What is going on? Maybe Justice Pantan write up for bring him own water. Because the water like the a parliament, maybe something wrong with it. You are saying to him that they shouldn't be called to parliament. And you see them face? They were, they, everybody sprout up when Paul well said that. Look at him and insert it into their memory. Okay, I will remember Sir Paul well said that we're going to be good to Paul well because we're going to remember Sir Paul said that. And maybe something wrong with Paul well. Um, declarations and Paul will say and all of that to make sure his declaration it, 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 um, get, gets um, what you call it um, whatever they do with it to uh, approve it or something like that there's a word I, I don't remember it right now but Paul will say that and it's a wrong thing for Paul will to say that I don't know if Mark tell him to say that I don't know if it was, if it was something from the, from the party leadership to say Paul will need to go say that and then if it is I have to register my disappointment that Paul will still taking orders from these guys. But Paul will said that that commissioners should not be parliament should not be called to parliament. Then Paul will went on and said something else to beef that up or to to expose something that is going on with him himself. And I do I do love Philip Paul and I'm not beating up on Philip Paul. Every time I beat him up on, on Philip Paul is to make him better. Then he asked the commissioners, ceding all power, ceding everything to them. He asked them, is there anything that you think we should be doing as parliamentarians, as ministers? Is there anything we should be, we should be doing, basically saying, basically saying to them, okay, daddy, I made a mistake. What do you want me to do? That, that's basically what it was, what it was. You know, is there anything that we should be doing? What the hell? You are the parliamentarians. You are the legislators in King Charles III Parliament. You are the ones that the people elected. Not Panton and him crew. No. They elected you all alone in there. I mean, the Jamaican voters are a shabby set of people because I mean, they elect shabby people all the time. But I uh, uno them elect, I uh, uno go knock on door and walk in a mud and walk in a water and kiss ass and sit down and eat taste bad food and drink taste bad soup. All kind of people, frowsy people, stinking mouth people, all kind of people are rubbing off your hug them up, forget them to vote for. I uh, uno face them the kind of humiliation there. I uh, uno uh, people cuss uno and tell no for do it no matter and all them kind of something there. Is uno, is uno for God people yard climb some hill. I'm going to sit down by some dirty chair and have some woman and we don't be here much days. I hug you up and kiss you up. I don't mean no disrespect to nobody. No disrespect. But I'm just telling you what, what it is. You know? Dirty hand man and dirty hand man people and snotty nose pick me up and lift up. I don't going to do the campaigning for them to elect you. You don't see that to some man where you just appoint and give them a cozy office and hold heap of money and hold heap of power. Power which they are clearly, clearly abusing to some extent. But Mr. Powell did. Is there anything that we can do? Anything that we should do? To make you feel proud of us? That was, that was a down moment. A real down moment. Julian asked very good questions, I must say. He did. I was kind of surprised. It, does, it never seemed like questions that were... That, that 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 was necessarily from party central but questions he himself wanted to ask i get that um uh, um I, I get that feeling i never expected the pmp parliamentarians and the committee to ask any tough questions of of justice panton and the crew but i expected a little bit more um um passion from the glp um members of parliament but it was very well executed by Mrs. Malahu Fort, Pernell Charles Jr. 
and um and, and, and minister truck it was very well executed and maybe maybe mr Owens need to consider that way when it comes to this ic matter him need to have malahu fort and um Pernel charles jr be the front people in 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 these things because mrs malahu fort wreck justice pantan she totally wreck him is a total wreck when him go home um when him go home and rethink the whole day's activities um, I'm, I'm sure i'm having some problems because mrs malahu him is a him is a judge and mrs malahu fort is also um um, a lawyer, or, or, um, I believe she was a judge. Yeah, she was a judge. So a judge against judge, and him get knocked over and knocked around, and um, him, him wasn't pleased about it. Justice Panton and the IC went to the Parliament to 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 score the Parliament and to 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 show the Parliament that them have power and 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 tell the Parliament that is only 30% of the Jamaican people vote. Um, I, I I don't know what that state uh, what that particular part time statement was about except to say to them say don't bother try not know what we can kind of vote for people to vote for no I I don't know I can't take it to be anything else except that him saying that you know, we'll all no will stop because you know yeah nobody like we but a very few people like oh no just is very rude and is a very rude and out of order man who have absolutely no regard for the rule of law. Uh, or the, the role that our parliamentary um our parliamentarians play in this very young democracy that we call um jamaica and uh, i still i still maintain that this pal that this ic commission needs to be disbanded and if them serve out them seven years none of them not a single one of that crew should sit back on that and and that commission they have made the the the, the commission into a personal like a vendetta tool for themselves carrying out personal vendettas and biases and malice you know and i am just i am just sorry that somebody like mr mr warmington never in there to tell them that oh we never ask you no question for tell them it in raw jamaican terms we know you know you, you know answer to nobody well those who you think you answer from it them peer you make them peer for the care make them peer for the office let them put the money in the bank account where you get every month. Let them pay for all the people they want to hire. Some of whom would have known them in their do. Let them pay for that. Somebody for remind them. So we're talking about the people elected me here. Nobody elected you. Somebody for tell them that. Yeah, but you know, Mrs. Mallow who fought and Pernet Charge, you know, is very, 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 very parliamentary. They put on a class act. And they pierce that armor that Justice Panton come in there to come this up the parliament and treat the parliament with scant disregard. And that is my two cents on the matter. Thank you for listening to my rant. God bless you all. Stay safe, everybody. And please keep the children safe. Like the video.